and incoming the uh, incoming or parliament uh, presidential candidate of the National Democratic Congress in the forthcoming general election. I bring you warm felicitation from the members of the Ghana National Association of Teachers in the Hokwe North District, which comprise of Guan, Hokwe Municipality, and Apajato South. We have several challenges as other Ghanaians have, and the following are these challenges. One, basic education. The standard-based uh, curriculum has been introduced for the past years, yet most of the textbooks are non-existent. So our members are always asked to log on to the online website to look for material themselves. Meanwhile, most of the places to network accessibility is a challenge. So in order to avoid this, we are appealing to you that if God grants your wish, you come, you consider providing these textbooks. And then that of the common core, the first batch will be writing their final examination, yet none of the textbooks to is available. Then when you go to the SHS, as one of my earlier speakers or colleagues said, there are several challenges, but the most important one is the, the free, HS, free SHS has brought a lot of untold hardship onto our members, being that some of them stay in school throughout the year. So I want to believe that it is because of the track system. So you consider scrapping the, scrap, uh, the track system so that our members will not be sent to their early graves. Then the next thing is uh, uh, our welfare. We, con we want you to consider our... Uh, what? We want you to consider the risk allowance. Risk allowance for teachers and then clothing allowance because we actually need them. Then another important thing also we want you to consider is investing in the infrastructure aspect of the second cycle and even basic education. Then one most important thing that is affecting we teachers, especially members of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, is that every month we pay dues to run the association. Then we also have a fund where our members get their retirement package. Before now, when we pay the dues, at the end of the month, 15th of the ensuing month, these deductions are credited to our account by controller. But now, it's in four months arrears. So we want you to consider when you come, you revert it to the former status. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. I am Elulu Aji, Municipal Disability Leader and uh, Disability Dex Regional Secretary of the party. I am here to put before our incoming President, JM, a few uh, needs. Uh, the first, I will like to put uh, before our incoming president uh, that when he comes he should try to put uh, policies in place so that sign language interpreters could be trained and then distributed to uh, the various district hospitals and regional hospitals so that it will in turn help our members whenever they attend hospital. Um, I also played with our incoming president that the government support through the common fund that goes to our members uh, uh, policies will be put in place so that the third party will be removed from the, the disbursement of that fund uh, so that enough um, most, uh, uh, enough of the fund will go to our members instead of third party taking their profit before the, 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 the small amount is given to our members through the artists. Uh, and then, um, finally, the accessibility of public structures 
uh, I'll plead with the incoming government to have a, a serious look at it for us so that our members can equally attend in, uh, to uh, transact business at any public structures with ease without any support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On this note, uh, having the Disabled Association of Kofwe making requisitions to His Excellency, we want to show proof of the commitment of President Mahama to cater for disabled people in his next administration. We received a request from a disabled person from somewhere, Oti. We are one Ghana. Akufuado came to dis dis divide us. The youth wing made efforts to buy this machine that cost 30,000 Ghana cities. And we want to present it to Mr. Uh, Akoto Elijah. And we want to call on the PC of Huawei constituency to come down and do the donation quickly. Then we move forward. Elijah Akoto, if you are here, you move, come forward for the machine. All. of his commitment to the disabled people of Ghana, that he believes in inclusivity, that women, men, both able and disabled of all ages will be catered for. Because of this request, we have taken a stand, and this is what we have done for you today, in honor of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Thank you very much. Dr. Anamba of you has to come here quickly. Good evening, my president. Please, I am Prudent from the University of Health and Allied Sciences. I'm Prudent from the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Please, I'm Prudence from the University of Health and Allied Sciences. And from talking for School of Public Health, I would like to talk about our infrastructure. The infrastructure of School of Public Health is very, very poor, and I would like it if the President will come to our aid coming 2024. Secondly, the licensure exams we must write when we graduate school. I think we are in the university for four good years. And the university take us to the next level because we do our best. So I don't see the reason why we have to write the licensure exams when the university took us to the next level and we are graduating. May I, President, I would like to say this. Coming 2024, when you become the president of Ghana, I want to tell you not to forget the good people of School of Public Health. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A massive greetings to His Excellency John Ramani Mahama. My name is Abdullah Mohammed, a medical laboratory scientist from Keres University College. Keres University College. Mr. President, I say medical laboratory science concern. My fellow seniors, my previous seniors who have completed since 2020, 2021. They are still in the house, craving to get a job. And as a youth, my concern, I'm like your heart surgery, and I know we we'll vote to bring you in power. So when you come on power, what will you do to cure such cancer for us? Mr. President, my last point is a request. As a college is concerned, as a health institution is concerned, all these noble institutions create future leaders country workers who develop the country through the institution. So, 
as my colleagues have mentioned, our institution as Keres College University is lacking infrastructure such as medical laboratories, computer labs, lecture halls, and a lot. So, I would like to put before you, if you come on power, what will you do to solve all this problem for us? Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, you are welcome to Hohue. My name is Dr. Makwami Ananga and I'm from the Fred Binka School of Public Health, UHAS. So I have three key issues. Two of them have been spoken about by our uh, candidates and then my students here, about our infrastructure. The next one is about the condition of service for UTAC members. UTAC is 50 years and as of now there is no unified condition of service for us. Your Excellency, 2025, when you come, that should be the first thing on your paper. Secondly, it has to do with the book and research allowance. We are asking that you maintain it, but come up with a research fund where researchers or faculty can go in and tap. The book and research allowance is not adequate for any proper research that will inform policy. Thank you, Your Excellency. Please give them a round of applause before we hear from His Excellency the President. There's these two issues I want to bring to your notice. Currently, citizens of Huawei are not safe. Yesterday, an elderly man was kidnapped on the street and 100 Ghana cities was placed in his pocket by agents of the MPP and they put emblems of MPP colors on him to take pictures to proclaim that he has defected to the MPP. The next group of people who are endangered are the assemblymen that are elected. They are having sleepless nights, so they have made a decision that before the world, in presence of the cameras, they want to declare their support for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama now, so that tomorrow if they are abducted, nobody can call them to order. We call the assemblymen to come forward and do their declaration immediately. to say a very big thank you to the organizers and we also want to use this opportunity to welcome the incoming president the incoming commander in chief come January 7th 2025 inshallah his excellency John Dramani Mahama will be sworn in as the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces and the president elect or the president of Ghana. I am Abdul Rafiw Adam, the assembly member for Bibla Electoral Area. And I am here with my colleagues. We are not here to make any suggestions. Ours is to throw and declare our unflinching support to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and our parliamentary candidates in the person of Honorable Domache Cheko. We want to we, we want to use this opportunity to inform His Excellency that out of the 17 electoral areas, the NDC have swept 12 of the electoral areas. And we, the 12 elected NDC Assembly members, are going to work tirelessly to ensure that come 20. 25 December 7th, His Excellency 
Jantramani Mahama is declared and sworn in as the president of Ghana. And our unflinching support goes out to our parliamentary candidate, Honorable Thomas Wolayo Cheko. We are going to work tirelessly and make sure that we come back to power. Thank you very much and welcome once again Wezo to His Excellency John Dramani Mohamma. Thank you so much. Please give them a round of applause. So tomorrow when you see a picture of them with MPP, know that they have been abducted. They have declared their own alloy support for His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama and Efo Walanyo Teko, the next MP. Ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge the presence of Okada riders and the fashion designers. Honorable Benizelu is here. You have you tag. They are here. And then fashion designers, we acknowledge your presence. Okada riders, one minute. Thank you, thank you. Good evening, Mr. President. I'm the Vice Chair of the Okada Riders Association. We are here this evening to inform you that we are also working to move Ghana forward. We are helping the students on campus with mobility. People from far, where car cannot go, we help them to have access to whatever they want to do in town. So we are pleading to you that when we vote you on power, please help us to legalize Okada in Ghana and also help us to do license for us. We thank you very much. We thank you. So you hear from the horse's own mouth, the Okada Riders Association have declared again for President John Dramani Mahama. Okay. So now, I will now call on the regional secretary. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my humble pleasure to seek your assistance with a resounding and tumultuous applause to welcome to the stage the incoming Commander-in-Chief of Ghana Armed Forces and President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, to speak to us. for this program. As you are aware, this program is the Building Ghana Tour and today is the final day of the Volta Region program. And I'm happy that we are ending it here on this campus with a Campus Connect program. We've listened to everything that you've said and I must say that for those of you who've been following the tour, you realize that several of the issues that have been raised are the same issues that your colleagues in other places have raised. And we have responded to those issues over and over and over again. And so I'll sound like a broken record, 
if I recount everything that you have said. But I wish to assure you that Beatrice, who is sitting in the back there, Anan, with her laptop, has captured everything that you said. And once we get back to Accra at the end of the tour, we are going to synthesize everything that we have heard. And those that are not already in our 2020 manifesto, we are going to update it so that we issue the 2024 manifesto sometime in the middle of the year. Like I said, the issues are the same. Licensure exams, I have talked about it and talked about it. And so you know what our position is. We are going to make the licensing of teachers to coincide with their final year in College of Education. So that by the time they come out, they are licensed teachers, they don't have to apply to write another exam in order that they become licensed. We've said that already. But there are many issues that are peculiar to your particular campuses. For instance, one of you complained of water crisis on campus, and I think that if you direct this appeal to your parliamentary candidate, he will assist you. Because I've been following his activities, and I know since he became the candidate, he's drilled 13 boreholes already. So the campus that complained of water crisis, FO Walanyo, please, they will get in touch with you and try and help them drill a borehole to solve the water crisis that they have. <laughs> Training allowances for me was a matter of principle. And in 2016, for those of you who listened to me, I said I was willing to put the presidency on the line as a matter of principle on trainee allowances and you took your decision and voted against me and I left the presidency without any complaints but the point is my intention was not to cancel allowances I said we're going to substitute them with a student loan scheme for, for you and so that is still my position that we will put you on the student loan scheme so that you can get the money that you want to finance your education and when you leave office and you get a job then you can start paying that loan back if you don't get a job nobody is coming to follow you and ask you to pay the student loan and so that's the position that uh, we have in respect of the student loan but I will appeal on your behalf there are those who said they will pay you the training allowances and now the training allowances are in arrears so I'm standing here in Hohoi on behalf of all the institutions here the nurses and the teachers and they say Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Nana Akufuado please the allowances have not come can you come and pay them their training allowances now Infrastructure is common to everybody. Infrastructure has come to a standstill because the GET Fund has been collateralized. This government has taken the GET Fund in advance and used it. And so all the money that is coming in the GET Fund today is going to pay the debt for the money that they have taken. And that's why all the projects on your campuses have come to a standstill. And so I have suggested that they should add the GET Fund debt to the debt restructuring so that it frees up the funds for us to be able to pay the contractors to continue the projects that are on your campuses. And as I've said, we'll prioritize ongoing and abandoned projects first before we continue new projects. So on your campuses, if you have abandoned dormitories, if you have abandoned dining halls, abandoned administration blocks, abandoned uh, uh, whatever facilities, we will tackle those ones first before we start building new ones. You'll agree with me that we do have challenges with the implementation of the free SHS. We are going to sit together and think through those challenges and we are going to solve them together. Some of them were mentioned 
you know the students are congested they don't have enough infrastructure they don't have enough teaching and learning aids the teachers are overworked because of the double track system teachers work from the beginning of the year till the end of the year with no break in, in between those are all challenges of the free SHS the food quality is poor how do we uh, 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 decentralize the feeding system so that we put the feeding and the procurement of the food in the hands of the headmasters and the bezers so that they can procure the food and get better quality food for the children these are all things that all of us must come together sit and discuss so that we can uh, uh, smoothen the implementation of bottlenecks of the free SHS e-blocks we will continue the e-blocks project and so all the abandoned e-blocks we will continue them and I had the suggestion to put some of the e-blocks on the colleges of education so that we can create more space for you for teaching and learning we recorded that and we'll take note of it and uh, the nursing college said that they are the only college in this country running a shift system because of lack of adequate facilities and infrastructure we've taken note of that and uh, inshallah we will see what we can do about it new curriculum no textbooks and that's at the basic level the new curriculum came four years ago and up till now the children don't have the textbooks it is an aberration basic education is suffering because funding to basic education has reduced sharply the capitation grant, grant is not coming and yet we are spending most of the money on the secondary level meanwhile the basic level is the most important because if you don't get it right at the basic level when the student arrives at secondary however much money you spend you cannot change what has not been done properly and so we will look at all that and see how we can restructure our educational system and I'll plead with the teachers unions NAT and NAGRAT and UTAG and TEWU and all of them I know all of you are clamoring for allowances increase in your allowances and so on and so forth let me caution you that in 2025 inshallah after we take over we will show you the books and the finances of this country and you realize and you realize the harm that the MPP administration has done to Ghana's economy this country is broke and so we would beg you that when we come into office give us a bit of a honeymoon let's put things in place so that we can bring the economy back on its feet and when we have done that we can uh, accede to your demands again and that's why I'm being very measured in the promises that I make because we all know the crisis in which this country has been plunged then people with disability if we say we are suffering then these are brothers and sisters are suffering ten times more than us the district assembly's common fund that we put aside a percentage to cater for their needs in the various districts is not coming and aside from that the MPP administration has reduced the common fund from 7% to 5% so the amount of money that they are entitled to is a percentage of the common fund and so if you reduce it from 7 to 5 then it means the amount of money they are getting is less and so aside from the fact that the money is less the frequency too is not coming the uh, district assembly common fund is not being released and what is being released is very little because government has centralized most of the procurement and so instead of sending the money to the districts to do their own procurement they, are, they procure the items in the center and so these are all things we would look at when we come
It is time to review the Disability Act. It was passed in 2006. And so we need to look at the Disability Act, look at the gaps in implementation. For instance, we presented this electronic wheelchair to our brother here. I can't see a ramp. Is, is, is there stairs over there? Stairs. What of there? Stairs or ramp? Steps. And so we gave him the new electronic wheelchair. But there's no way he could have come up here to even come and shake my hand. And that's why I had to get up and go and shake his hand down there. And yet the Disability Act says that all public facilities must be made disability friendly and must be accessible to persons with disability. And so we need to review that act and make sure that we enforce the provisions of the act so that they also can live a comfortable life. And then, of course, we had the School of Public Health and then the issue of book and research allowances. We had in Professor Mills' time, Professor Mills said he was going to establish a research fund so that lecturers could access the fund. And he was going to use it to replace the book and research allowance. But our dear lecturer said, no, they are not going to give up the book and research allowance. And so we left it. And uh, we didn't go ahead with setting up the research fund. What my brother is saying is that, yes, we want to keep our book and research allowance, but at the same time, still establish the research fund so that we can also dip there in order to do our research. We've recorded all that, and uh, we will look at it. Uh, finally, uh, legalize Okada. I've said it, and I'll say it again in 2020. We we're very clear about it. We're going to legalize Okada and all the tricycles, and we're going to regulate them. Right now, it is a reality that exists. No government can come and stop it. And yet, because we are behaving like ostriches with our heads in the sand, we are refusing to legalize it. If you jump on an Okada now, or you go into a tricycle, and you have an accident, there is no insurance because they are not legally allowed to carry passengers, and so you will not get any insurance. But if we legalize and regulate them, they would have insurance. If anything happens, you will have an insurance cover if you are injured. And aside from that, if we legalize and register them, we can be able to tell the difference from the genuine Okada riders and the armed robbers who use motorcycles to go and rob. And that will help with safety and security in our communities. And so yes, we will legalize it, we will regulate it, so that the young people who are in that business can do their job. And so these are the main issues uh, that were canvassed. And uh, I want to thank you very much for all the contribution that you've made. Um, ho hoy, Assembly members, I want to congratulate you on your victory in the election. As I have said, you are the lucky ones because when NDC comes into office, we are going to pay you an allowance. We have costed it. We have costed it, and to pay all assemblymen an allowance of 1,000 CDs a month will cost us 80 million CDs a year. The Office of the President budget alone is more than 2 billion CDs. And so the Office of the President expenditure, we're not going to find new money for the assembly members. We're going to reduce the President's office expenditure and use that money to pay the assembly members. So let me thank you very much. Um, we will be back for the actual campaign. This is just the Building Ghana tour. And um, when we come back for the campaign, it will be more political. And uh, we will have the opportunity to discuss the strategies that we are going to implement to bring Ho Hoi back into the NDC family. You, you are the only constituency in Volta region that is an orphan and uh, we, we don't want you to continue to be an orphan so your father is calling you back 
and we're going to come and take you back into the NDC family. Thank you very much. Akwena mi, Maorna Yiramikata.